Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India A very warm welcome to all my dear friends and students. Uh, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you wherever you are in this part of the globe and uh, listening to this lecture at a particular time. Welcome once again, welcome to this investment analysis and portfolio management uh, lecture series under SWAM uh, lecture series. And as you know, we were discussing in the last class about the combinations of forwards and options considering the main idea was uh, reduction of risk. And I did mention and that was the major portion of discussion in the last lecture. And I did mention that risk uh, was being used in a very generic sense that uh, it is not, it is can be a loss, it can be a standard deviation which is a, a, a concept of dispersion, variance. And in uh, finance, we do consider the concept of value at risk, expected regret, expected shortfall, then EVAR, conditional value at risk, uh, then there is a concept of sharp ratio. There are other things also which we will consider later on. And I also did mention that uh, the concept of risk measures uh, are used differently for normal distribution or symmetric distribution and non-normal distribution. And we will consider that in de details later. So, our main emphasis uh, was risk reduction for combinations of forward and options and it was more of a pictorial analysis which will be occurring later on once we do the later part of this course and also in the other course which is related to risk management. In the fag end of the last class, uh, I went into the concept, I, I drew it very briefly, uh, briefly in the sense it was not in details about the concept of um, binomial trees and I did mention about the, the, the concept of multinomial trees and we will use the concept of uh, risk neutral valuation and how it can be utilized to find out the Black-Scholes model and finding out the prices of the options. And my good name is Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department at IIT Kanpur in India. So, today is the 27th lecture um, under the investment analysis and portfolio management and our main discussion will just start off from where we left in, in the 26th lecture. It will be about binomial, multinomial models and risk neutral valuation. I will go more through the through the concept slowly and they would be explained in the slides accordingly as we proceed. Now, I did mention in the last class that uh, the concept of stochastic process which is uh, this concepts of Brownian motions, then uh, this concept of, of uh, different type of stochastic models would be utilized in a very brief sense. And for the binomial model, the main idea was that the stock prices can either increase one step or decrease. And we consider the increase of the with the probability of p and now as the sum of the probability is 1, so the decrease would be 1 minus p. So, if you have the prices as S0, so it will increase um, to as you can see this example. So, and just highlight it. I'll I'll mention the increase. I didn't use any color. It was basically of a discussion. So now the coloring scheme. Even though I don't know how how helpful it is for you, but it makes sense for me to color the different type of diagrams, different type of notations, different type of equations which are right. So they come out much more clearly as you see these uh, slides and the lectures. So. If the increase in probability is considered as positive, obviously, 
and we consider the green line here. So, the probability is p and the upper bound which is s underscore u is given by 22 that means, I am just taking theoretical values. So, it in 20 increases to s u. Now, another thing the suffix here would be used interchangeably dep depending on the notion I am trying to basically express. So, here if you consider this this s naught basically means the prices of the stock at time t is equal to 0. So, we have time given here which is t is equal to 0 and time is equal to say for example, t 1. So, the price s naught increase would be at t 1. So, infinite decimal uh, time intervals which we are taking. I will I'll come to that uh, word why I am using this infinite decimal time later on. And if it decreases uh, at time t is equal to 1, it becomes uh, s suffix d decrease as 18 and, and these are just hypothetical values. So, let us consider the example with the t diagram. So, uh, so this tree diagram which is there, it is for the binomial one it can be extended for binomial trees from stage 1 to stage 2, stage 2 to stage 3 and it can be also be considered for the multinomial trees. So, let us consider the example with the tree diagram illustrated in the previous slide and let the portfolio consist of a long position. So, why these concepts are being analyzed, I will come to that. So, you have a long position in delta number of shares in the stock and a short position and a short position in one call option. So, we will find out the value of delta which would make the portfolio riskless. So, you have one quantum of long and one quantum of short. Now, for upward movement of the prices based on what we have considered as, as 22, the value of the portfolio will be 22 into delta minus 1 and for the forward downward movement of the price, the valuation of the portfolio will be given as 18 into delta depending on movement. Why minus 1? Because you are considering one short position and that uh, would be exercised. Now, if both of these positions are of the same value, that means neither it, it gives you any positive benefit or negative benefit for, for the prices going up or neither does it give you any uh, positive or negative benefit and uh, nor does it give you any positive or negative benefit uh, provided the stock prices go down. So, obviously, equality should hold uh, true for the value of the portfolio considering there is an upward trend or upward movement of the price or the lower movement of the prices. And if we uh, equate these left hand side and the right hand side depending on the value which I will now highlight. So, you get delta s basically 0.25 which is 1 fourth. Now, the value of delta would obviously depend on what is the upward movement of the price and the lower movement of the price and obviously that would be dictated by the probability p and 1 minus p. So, now consider the stock price we are now using the more generic variables and, and symbols to make us aware. And we are also bringing the prices of the options, not, not the, the value capital F, the small f. So, the, the stock I will mark with um, say for example, red this is S naught increases with probability p to S u and S naught decreases with probability 1 minus p to S l lower limit and the forward uh, corresponding the options from S f. So, obviously, I could have written f uh, suffix not, but I am using the symbol f only. So, it in it increases 
let me use the different color f increases to f u with probability for the case for when, when the probability is p and it decreases to f d. Now, we will do the problem. So, let the portfolio consist of we are making it much more generic as I said of delta shares of price S naught of stock and a short position in one option the price is small f which I now am bringing into the picture. We find the value of delta which will make the portfolio riskless that means both positive and negative movement should be balanced. So, let us consider the two situations one by one. For an upward move price movement, the price of the stock would basically become S u into u and the payoff from the option would be F u depending on the prices of increase. Hence, the total value of the portfolio would be, so if the prices move up, so, depending or move down depending on whether you have gone a long position or a short position on the stock or the option you will exercise it and not exercise it. So, here we had considered a long position. So, let me highlight it we have considered a long position in delta num amount of shares and a short position in one option price. So, obviously, it would mean that if the prices move up and down for the upward movement, the value of the portfolio would be as shown. So, why this minus here which is which is being shown uh, in this uh, value of the portfolio because that options would be exercised. And, and and that the, I am not using uh, saying that who will exercise it that but I am saying that it will be exercised such that the total value would decrease by minus f u. Now for a downward movement of the price the price of the stock would be s not into d and the payoff from this option as mentioned in the diagram in in slide number six would be f d hence the value of the of the the option. I will use uh, let me use the red color would be S naught into D. So, S naught remains the same for both the cases because that was the initial price and the increase and the decrease are given by U into D and uh, the, the value of the portfolio in both the cases in the first case would decrease by a value of, of F u decrease. So, that is why it is minus and in the second case it will decrease by the value of F d hence it is minus. So, now if this riskless both should match depending on whether you want to make up or whether the situation entails that there is a profit uh, in the upward price movement or a loss in the upward price movement the values uh, on the left hand side or the right hand side for the equality. Equality means for the case when it is basically riskless that equality sign would be replaced by a greater than sign or a less than sign. Now, there is no arbitrage that means nobody is making a profit neither the seller or the buyer and I am considering the situation that everything is perfect. Perfect means all the assumptions are true. So, in this case when we consider and any balance both the left hand side and the right hand side the equations equation becomes this for the riskless uh, for the portfolio uh, to be uh, riskless. Now, in, in, in this equation which uh, uh, let me mark it simple equation 1. S naught is known because the price of the stock today. I assume depending on the probability what would be the upward and the downward movement of the stock price and I also know the, the option which is uh, prices being f suffix u and f suffix t. So, the only factor or the only variable which is not known which we need to find depending on how we can make our portfolio riskless is delta. So, once we solve it the delta value becomes this. 
in the in the just when we started the the problem we have considered the prices as given the variable values were known 20 22 and 18 that means 20 at s naught and increase was 22 decrease was 18 also if the risk free interest rate is r then we must have this now this is uh, important for us to know when we are considering the price as of today so this is for t is equal to 0 so the value of the portfolio will be increasing and the rate of the increase would be based on the fact that what is the risk free interest rate so if we have the value of s naught into delta minus f and that increases by e to the power r t so this capital t being the case when you want to find out that uh, the value of the portfolio in both upward and downward movement balance that is the risk less case so that should be equal for the case as s naught into u increase into delta that is the quantum of the option minus the option price so i i if i take it the time value in order to consider the time value i take e to the power rt onto the right hand side and the equation which you have is exactly as it is given so it will be equal to s naught so you have s delta s naught delta minus f is equal to s naught u delta minus f u multiplied by e to the power minus r t because r r is with the suffix f which is the risk free uh, interest rate would be e to the power minus r t hence you can find out the value of f given as required and uh, you can you can replace these values of what we mean by p so this value of p is just being replaced in the above equation accordingly and uh, this risk 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 free interest rate r as calculated for the upward one can be calculated for the downward uh, trend also And, and they should match depending on you assume your assumptions is correct. Now, for the risk neutral valuation, a very important concept is I will I'll draw the diagram and try to make you understand without going to the proof. So, say for, say for example, you have the timeline. this timeline t is equal to 0 and t is equal to t capital t and i am considering the difference between this time which is capital t can be made as small as possible i am not using the word delta because that has been utilized in the last three or four slides so it should be as small as possible that means for infinite uh, decimal increment of the times I am trying to find out. Now, if I consider S, so here the price would be S naught and here the price is capital S T and that is S T can be depending on what I take as a snapshot of the prices what is there at capital or at small t is equal to capital T. And if I consider the price movement so can consider the first instant i'll use colors here to understand make you understand so consider the price movements are this so this is one like one instant consider the next one So, they did not merge at, at uh, these values which I am using are given for different scenarios. So, if they are given for different scenarios, I should basically use the color also. So, this is 
sorry it won't would not be proper for me to explain so the third case consider the price movements are given and this is st fourth case again st fifth case hope it doesn't get too much cluttered but i wanted to just try it so if i continue taking it take and you know taking a snapshot and i want to find out the expected value of these prices then in the long run the expected value of the prices should be exactly equal to what you have okay i um, may i should basically sorry sorry i should use the different color here so expected value what i'm uh, what i should have should be exactly equal to s not into the e to the power rt the reason is very simple if i want and in the case when everything is perfect the reason being if it is not that then obviously either the buyer or the seller person going for a long position or the short position would be making extraordinary profits in the theoretical sense we do not want to that to happen so if you if you remember for the case when the the financial asset is not paying you any dividend is a zero coupon bond then the actual price delivery price based on which the contract should be signed between the buyer and the seller should be exactly equal to the price in expected price increase of the of the spot and that should be equal to s not into e to the power rt now let us give a, a different viewpoint how you how you can analyze it consider both the seller and the buyer i want to basically buy so what i would do is that i'll basically put a snot amount of money in the bank as time goes by the value of that money which is there in the bank increases by the interest rate of r r is basically r suffix f which is the risk free interest rate the moment the time has come i need to buy i go to the bank take out the money the amount of money which i get because it has increased by by the risk free interest rate continuous compounding the amount of money which i will get is s not e to the power rt i immediately go into the market buy it and i close my position which means i neither i make a profit or a loss on the other hand if i want to basically sell consider i go to the bank ask the bank to give me money and i get s not amount of money obviously the bank will charge me an interest rate so it is charging me an interest rate of r suffix f now i am i am considering the risk free interest rate of lending and borrowing is of same value which is not so practically in practical sense not true so when the time comes i we need to basically sell it because I, with that amount of s not i bought that particular um, um, financial asset and when the position position comes when it expires i i go into the market sell it at s not into the e to the power rt immediately take that money go into the bank and repay my overall the amount of money which i have taken along with the interest rate so in both the cases <coughs> the value of 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 my transaction both for the seller and the buyer exactly should match or else they would be in arbitrage so if 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 this two exa case one and case two examples which i gave <coughs> along with the diagrams which is there in front of you you will understand in the risk neutral valuation case the expected value of of st at time capital t should be exactly equal to s not into the e to the power rt and again another assumption the risk free interest rate we are considering as fixed leave aside the point of of the risk free interest rate being different for the buyer and the seller it is fixed that is also not a true proposition or an assumption so a stock price is currently at 40 us dollars or whatever the unit is it is known that the, at the end of one month it will increase to 42 or it will decrease to 38 the risk free interest rate is 8% per annum what is the continuous compounding uh, which is being continuously compounded so what is the value of one month european call option with a strike price of 39 now here 
we consider either the price would increase or decrease and based so it can increase as given here 42 it can decrease by to 38 and it was initially 40 so if i have that tree diagram on this binomial concept so this is 40 without the units it increases 42 without the units it decreases to 38 the value of probability increase 1 minus p can be found out and the risk free interest rate is given as rf i am utilizing rf is 8 percent per annum continuous compounding and the time frame is given is basically 1 month which is equal to 1 by 12 in in the year concept because always the time frame would be given in the yearly concept whether it's given in months days weeks whatever it is so based on that you can find out the one month european call option with a strike price of 39 so this this 39 is basically the value of x or k which i have been denoting in the case of the options and based on that you can understand whether the person makes a profit or a loss or whether they are arbitrage opportunities accordingly so, if I want to basically explain the no arbitrage and the risk neutral valuation um, approaches which is there for the binomial uh, European option using the one step binomial tree, then obviously the concept which I considered would be would be true. Based on this we can find out that what is the expected value of the prices of the, of the spot at capital uh, t is equal to small t. And if I want to find out the uh, these probabilities. so s increase is given is known to you which is given if i go back to the last slide is given as 42 s decrease is given as 38 this is 42 s not is given as 40 and if i want to find out the increase or the decrease so obviously we want to find out the expected value the expected value would be given as s not into the prob probability as i need, need to find out the expected value so what is expected value by the basic concepts on in, st in statistics if it is a it is a discrete case binomial one it will be x1 here x1 do not confuse with the strike price this is the random variable realized values multiplied by probability p1 again p is not the price of the option plus x2 again not the strike price not the delivery price multiplied by p2 again the probability and you can find it and if there are, are if it's a discrete case or the or the continuous case for the discrete case you will basically have the realized value x multiplied by the corresponding probability of capital x is equal to small x where x is again the realized values and for the case if we have the continuous one you will integrate it from the minimum value of x not f x to maximum value of x i am not putting the limits and you basically find out x into f of x dx where small f of x is basically the pdf of that distribution and x is basically the random variable so based on that you can find out uh, s not into p and s not plus s not into 1 minus p that should be basically be equal to the expected value of st and based on that you can calculate uh, the the values and that actually I should have been using different colors because, but I am sorry in the flow of the discussion, I just missed it. Let, let me use. So, that should be equal to S naught e to the power RT. So, here S naught is known, T is known, and R has been found out considering the uh, risk, uh, no arbitrage position based on which the calculations had been done, and you can find it accordingly. Now, even though um, uh, it is not written in the slides, but let me take few minutes uh, and, and let me explain um, in through the lectures that uh, how this can be extended for the two-step or three-step binomial trees as, as well as the multi-unimal models. 
So, in the uh, binomial models, if you are going for the next step, obviously you have and let me draw the diagram here, which I will erase and then consider the slide which is in front of you, which is the slide number 12 and which discusses about the behavior of stock prices and the Black Scholes model. So, now consider that you are in the next time period. So, consider the first time period capital T is equal to 1, then in the next time period capital T would be 2. So, I am using the numeric values in order to denote. So, time difference from 0 to 1, 1 to 2 is very small and that would be coming up later on as we consider these diagrams and, and discuss very, very in a very general sense, general sense in the sense in a very simple way the concept of, of, of what is written there in, in here in, in the slide. So, this is that first time frame, this is the second time frame, third time frame. And, and this is S naught, it can increase, it can decrease in the second time frame T capital T is equal to 1, again it can decrease and uh, price on from the decrease 1 it can increase and it can, and it can expand it as a tree. Now, when we are at small t is equal to 2, the expected value would be found out corresponding to three such um, realized values which you have. So, this was S naught, this I will consider as S 1 1 or uh, consider yeah let it let me can be 1 1 and this will be considered S 1 2. So, the first one is the next time period and 1 and 2 are basically the different type of states which you have. So, this will be given as S 2 1, this will be given by S 2 2, this will be given by S 2 3 and you have the probabilities given, let me, so this is probability P, this is 1 minus P, again this probability is increased from stage 1 to 2 is uh, it is uh, increasing by probability p, this is 1 minus p, this is p, this is 1 minus p. So, we will consider the step up probability that means, it is increasing and then decreasing. So, S naught increases to S 1 1, then again decreases to S 2 2. So, that is one loop and in the next case when you have S naught decreasing to S 1 2 and then increasing to S 2 2, both the values should be same. And if I want to find out the expected value at, at the second time frame, so that means small t is equal to 2, so that means capital T is equal to 2, then the expected value which you should have here at time is equal to 2 would be such that the value here should be equal to S naught e to the power r this t is equal to 2. And if you continue doing the calculations with, with, with uh, the unknown values being found out depending on the assumptions which you have, you can find out from stage to stage. So, it can be a basically an iterative process as you go. If it is a multinomial one, remember in the binomial one you have only two arms, in the multinomial one it would be more than two arms and you basically need to do the calculations accordingly and then find it out. Obviously, more number of such such um, uh, details would give you better results, but the point is that you have to do different type of calculations and use the computation concepts in order to calculate them. So, let me erase this. I will be coming back to these concepts in more details in, in uh, uh, this uh, second set of lectures which is more to do with um, risk. So, for the models of behavior of stock prices and concepts of Black-Scholes model with along with the assumptions, we will cover and discuss about 
the Markov property which I have been talking about the Markov property the, then the concept of Brownian motions and so on and so forth and I did mention very briefly the experiments of Robert Brown the botanist. So, we will consider the continuous time stochastic process. So, they would be continuous time. Um, so, discrete time and continuous time would be highlighted and why we are considering the con continuous time I will come to that later. We will consider the Ito's lemma and the brief background for that. We will cover and discuss also the log normal property of stack prices and I did mention about the log normal pro properties there and log normal properties would also have an implication that how the the continuous compounding concepts uh, have come. We will consider the distribution of the rate of returns. Here the third bullet point is the volatility and I like to highlight it here. <laughs> Let me highlight it, this one. And if you remember, I have been talking about loss, risk, loss, risk time and again. So, this volatility would be initially considered in a very general sense considering variance or standard deviation and later on it would basically be expanded to consider the different concept of risk. We will consider the concepts and derivations of black scholes uh, mertens differential equations again very simply and we will consider the concepts of implied volatility and how they can be utilized for the problem solving. So, the Markov property. So, in any particular type of stochastic process, stochastic process basically would mean that in, in general whenever you have probability and consider is a univariate case. So, in for the univariate case you have the probability given for the univariate uh, random variable. So, this x is not vector, it is a scalar. So, like I am only measuring height, I am only measuring temperature, I am only measuring weight, I am only measuring speed and so on and so forth. Now, in the case when you have the multivariate, obviously this I am not digressing, I am just highlighting how, how the concept of the, of the stochastic process would be coming. So, in the multivariate case, you would have again probability. And this would be a vector that is why I am highlighting with bold. So, that would be equal to a realized again this, this is the realized values. So, whenever you are considering we, this time concept is not there. So, it, in the in the multivariate case it can be you have different type of distributions for that um, multivariate normal distribution and multivariate so multivariate by in this uh, no, multinomial distributions you have different type of extreme value distributions which are considered when you consider the concept of finance i did mention again just for the introduction about the different type of extreme value uh, distributions Fracket distributions and so on and so forth. I will come back to that later on. Now, when you are considering a stochastic process, the time factor would also come. So, where the where only the present value of the variable is relevant for predicting the future. So, this is a very simplistic assumption, which means that so which means the probability that an let us con consider the stochastic process in the in for one variable. So, if if the value is x n, so actually this probability is x, uh, I will consider this provided x 1 is equal to x 1. So, these are the realized values depending on and, and this suffix x 1 or x n are not different random variables, they depend on the time frame like the suffix values which I am using for the capital X which is the random variable is depending on when you are measuring the, the variables.
So, if this is the actual uh, uh, equation, which it means the present value actually depends on the all the past values, but as it is said here and uh, if you can read it in a particular type of stochastic process for the Markov uh, of order 1, where only the present value of a variable is relevant for predicting the future, which means this actually should be, let me change the color. So, this, this uh, vertical line which I draw is that given. That means, the past values x 1 to x n minus 2 do not make sense. All the assumptions, all the informations are already subsumed under x minus 1. So, if I am trying, I am standing on x 3 and I have gone through time frame minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1. So, all the informations are already subsumed. So, past information would be of no use for me that is already available. So, which means where only the present value of a variable is relevant for predicting the future, which if you think very intuitively, all the past va values act in, in the theoretical sense, past values of the stock market are of no use. So, the present value as of today, when I open the stock market or when I want to basically find out the prices of today it would only be the expected value or the va based on the prices which is just one day before, even though that is not true in the practical sense, but that is basically the assumptions which has been written here. So, the categorization of the stock pro um, stochastic process and uh, for the stock prices are would be, they would be discrete time, time is discrete. So, that means time is equal to 3 is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and this 1, 2, 3, 4 are just numeric values. So, what unit you are basically utilizing is not, not important for us, is only I, I are not important for, for the discussion. What I want to basically highlight is that these time frames are different and the time difference between 1, 2, 3, 4 can be made as small as possible. The next um, important, uh, so let me continue with the first bullet point. So, th this is discrete time and the discrete variables, variables are discrete, mm, not continuous. The second categorization would be discrete time continuous variable, the third one would be continuous time discrete variable and the last one would be continuous time continuous variable. So, if I want to draw it, let me draw it uh, for, the, for the first bullet point you will, you will understand. So, again the time frame and it, this diagram would be coming up later on also when you consider the Ito's lemma and before that the Weiner process. Weiner process I did not mention that, but it will be coming up uh, in this class or later on depending on how the progress is. So, this, this is one, I have drawn a, a, a lengthy time scale. So, as you, as you, sh uh, so these are discrete times, okay, sorry, sorry, this is two, my apologies. I am not using 0, 1. So, as I, as I basically bring these time frames very close together, you will basically have the continuous time for these cases and in the, this, the diagram which I have drawn is true for the case when you have the discrete time discrete time cases and these are the diagrammatic representation for the discrete time. Similarly, the discrete variable would be like say for example, I am on, only measuring x which is the discrete variable or the variable can, can be take can take up only values of 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth or 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 or say for example, minus 2.5 minus 2.6, minus 2.7 and based on that we do the calculation. So, vari variables which are measuring would be that, but in the uh, continuous case they would be continuous variables as the example for the, uh, not for the stochastic process, but the example for the continuous variable being the, uh, the this case of uh, normal distribution. And a very good example of if you want to basically consider the concept of 
of discrete and um, continuous one, leave aside the time frame on the variables would be the Poisson process and the exponential distribution. So, if, uh, the Poisson process it would be, I will I'll just uh, talk something about that, it is more of a discussion, nothing may not be very much relevant for this course, but it is an interesting discussion. Now, during the Prussian war, uh, it was found that and, and, and cavalry was the main part based on which the war was, uh, was fought. And it was found out that uh, many of the soldiers were trampled um, by the horses as the fight was going on. And if you and it was found out that if 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 the number of deaths was calculated, it it followed a, a peculiar distribution, which is basically the Poisson distribution. Found out. And uh, if if uh, if you consider the example, so what is the uh, the example which I'm considering is like this. You are standing in front of a tailor machine in a, in a bank or in the tailor machine in a, in a bank counter or if you are standing in front of a machine which is doing work, continuous work like either a lathe machine or say for example, a painting uh, booth in a, in a factory, whatever it is and um, products are coming. So, in the bank human beings are coming, they are doing their work withdrawing cash, coming to the counter, getting their, their uh, check encashed or having their um, passbook um, um, printed or whatever it is. And you have a stop clock and you want to measure the timing. Now, as the and, and, and you want to measure the number of people also coming in within some, uh, some time frame. So, within 5 minutes, within 10 minutes whatever it is and you start decreasing the time frame based on which you are doing the calculation. So, decrease 10 minutes to 5, 5 to 2, 2 to 1, make it seconds and then milliseconds, nanoseconds, whatever. So, I am using these words in order to make you understand. Now, if, if in that case, if I want to find out the number of, of units of either the customers entering the tailor machine in front or coming to the counter or products coming to the machines, that the distribution for the numbers which is discrete would be Poisson process and the time taken to process each of them would basically the, be the exponential distribution. And uh, the number of patient, uh, the customers or the units can be 0 also in one sense and it can be infinite also. So, if you consider uh, those examples, those would be consi considered later on in, in, in the course 2 which is about uh, risk in financial management, you will understand that how the concepts of uh, stochastic process are utilized and these distributions are, are as true as in the probability sense and they are true in the, the stochastic process sense also. So, we can use any of the four types of stochastic process and to model stock prices, but the continuous time continuous variable proves to be the most useful for the purpose of valuing the derivatives because they give a, us a better picture in order to do the calculations rather than the discrete case because stock prices are continuously fluct fluctuating and if you remember, we have been considering the, the case of continuous compounding. Before I go, I, I, I thought I would mention an, another thing, again historical important fact, uh, this is uh, may not again be very relevant for this course, but is interesting. Uh, all of you must have heard about um, this lady of the lamp, uh, this uh, nurse who, who was there, Florence Nightingale and um, she is considered one of the pioneering person in statistics who did a lot of, of studies by collecting a huge set of data which became a, a pioneering work later on. So, I thought as I was mentioning about the Prussian war and the concepts of the Poisson distribution, I thought I should mention that. So, coming back to the slide 15, so we will basically consider the continuous time continuous valuing process where uh, variable process where x is continuous and the time frame is, is the difference is infinitely small that means at each instant is being done. In a marker process, future, future movement uh, in a variable depends on from where, where we are, not the history how we have come. So, if you realize with the discussion which we had in the last to last slides, 
that the past history is, was, was only there, how we have basically uh, arrived at the present position does not matter, only the relevant information is the past history. So, we, we so not the history of how we got where we are, we assume that stock prices follow Markov process, only the initial position and the final position matters, how we have uh, arrived, again I am mentioning would not basically make any sense. So, again if you go back finding out the expected value of S suffix t and I did mention, I did draw the diagrams that it will be equal to S naught e to the power r t. So, how the different type of paths of the stock prices happened, the snapshots or the examples which I gave, the theoretical one with drawing by drawing the, the movement in the prices would not basically give us any, any any useful set of information, only the, the initial and the final one. Our market process for stock prices is clearly consistent with the weak form market efficiency which asserts that it is impossible to produce consistently superior results with a trading rule based on the past history of the stock because the reason is very simple. Because if I am doing it trying to basically beat the market that information will be easily available to all the players in the market. So, as the demand and supply changes obviously, it will bring back uh, the whole system to equilibrium such that uh, if the demand is very high obviously, the prices would move in the in the direction such that it 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 so demand high means prices are very high and obviously people will start uh, the supply side would be restricted in the sense they will basically demand a higher price and then again equilibrium will set in if the supply is too low prices falls down and obviously it will be compensated by the corresponding demand and supply so, market process for a st stock price is clearly consistent with the weak form market efficiency which asserts that it is impossible to produce consistently superior re results with a trading rule based on the past history of the stock prices. In other words, technical analysis are based on, on, on the, so there are, there are two techniques, fundamental analysis and technical analysis which is a, a big part of, of the investor analysis consideration. So, you basically study the the past history. So, that would not work because we have assumed that the stock markets uh, follow this concept of Markov and Brownian motion process and only one step uh, historical information is one step means uh, just what has happened in the past is important for us. So, we will consider the discrete time continuous variable model in a very simplistic sense. A stock price is currently at 350. So, do not be too much bothered about what are, what are the units, the values and based on which we are doing the calculation is what is important. At the end of one year, it is considered that it will have a probability distribution given by normal one where 350 is basically the mean value and 400 is basically the variance, variance is basically the dis dispersion we are considering. So, n mu uh, comma sigma square which is here is a normal distribution with the mean value of mu and a variance of sigma square. Then we would wish to answer what is the probability distribution of the stock price at the end of 2 years or half a year or one fourth a year or some delta t period and here I would like to basically uh, go into the discussions that how the standard deviations of the variance are dependent on time. So, that would be an important fact uh, to consider. So, in Markov process uh, changes in the successive periods of time are independent. So, so when, when, when we are considering delta t from t to t 1, t 1 to t 2 and the time difference of t 1, t t 2, t 1 and all these things are delta t or they are considered to be independent as you make them as small as possible, which means the variances are additive. You can add up the variances, but the standard deviations are not additive. This is important without going to the proof. Let me highlight it. So, as the successive time periods are independent, hence the variances can be added but the standard deviations are not additive. That means, if I have the standard deviations, I have to basically square them up, find out the variances 
for each time frame and then add up to find out the total variance for the whole process. Thus, in our above example, it is correct to say that the variance is 800 for 2 years, but not the standard deviation is uh, the standard deviation is not 40 for 2 years. And which means that we will be considering this this one in more deta de details later on. So, I will I'll, I'll pause here and draw four diagrams very simply. Um, so, this this would uh, give us some idea that how the prices of the, the stocks move. So, first diagram. So, here along the y axis the measurement of, of any financial uh, series and along the uh, y x axis you have the time frame. So, uh, I will use different four colors in order to highlight. The first one, both the mean value and the variances are constant, they are not changing with respect to time. So, let us consider this. So, whether it is in the first quadrant or, or, or in the third of in, in the fourth quadrant, it is an immaterial. So, just look. So, at this is the mean value and if I consider see for example, the normal distribution, I am taking a snapshot, the mean value, the variances are same. Now, if I consider the second case where mean value is fixed, but the variance is changing. So, let me use a different diagram. So, mean value is, is fixed and the variance is increasing. Say for example, it can in de decrease also that does not matter. So, this is the mean value and if I take the variances it is increasing. So, the dispersion increases. Again the same uh, nomenclature along the x axis time along the y axis the prices. Third case, I think I should draw it here. The mean value is changing, but the variance is not changing. Consider the mean value is increasing. Let me utilize a different color. So, the mean value is increasing, but variance is not. So, this is the mean value rate is increasing and the variance is not. Finally, both are changing that means mean and standard deviation. So, I have this x axis, y axis, again x axis and y axis measure the same thing and uh, I have used the violet, dark red, green and let me use say for example, blue, light blue. So, I have to consider both are changing. So, consider um, uh, mean value is decreasing and variance is increasing. If I consider this is a decreasing trend, mean value, I am drawing with respect to say for example, the normal distribution. So, it explodes. So, thus uh, we will come be consider the simplistic cases uh, for this and again uh, before I close the class, it should be mentioned that we can add up the variances. Why? I will come to that later and how the problems are solved, I will come to that later, but the standard divisions cannot be. So, let me mark uh, before I because these are being recorded. So, for, for, for your benefit, let me mark as case 1, this as case 2, this as case 3 and the final one as case 4. So, with this I will end this, uh, this lecture and continue more discussions about the, this uh, winner process, Ito's lemma, how the prices of the stock markets can be utilized, 
and how, what semblance does it have with uh, risk uh, with continuous compounding case, how the Black-Schultz model can be simplistic derived, what are the assumptions and how they can be utilized. Have a nice day and thank you very much. Thank you.